Hello, my name is Ken Frankie, and I'm the operator of the Sport Fishing Boat Outer Limits. Over the last year, there's been a project uh, that's been pursued involving National Marine Fisheries scientists, State Department of Fish and Game. Uh, the project's actually been funded through the Pacific State Fisheries Commission, and uh, in conjunction with the Sport Fishing Association of California, we've all teamed up to go out offshore to hopefully develop a process to do assessments of rockfish in the California Bight. What you're going to see is, in essence, the culmination of that project where we've used acoustics equipment to get a three-dimensional view of the fish that are underneath the boat. Then we run the ROV submarine uh, through the biomass to determine the age, type, and density of the fish under the boat. Hope you enjoy the video. Although there are many species of rockfish, they all have one thing in common. They grow very slowly and typically aggregate in areas of hard, rocky bottom. Fishermen like catching rockfish because they're excellent table fare. However, heavy fishing pressure primarily by gillnet fishermen and longline boats at one point seriously impacted the stocks. Add to that the pressure of recreational fishing, and we ended up with a serious dilemma, especially in the area of the California Bight, which is from uh, Point Conception, California, down to the Mexican border. Regulatory action caused most commercial fishing for rockfish to come to a halt. The impacted stocks, while on the rebound, must be carefully monitored. In order to monitor the rockfish stocks properly, science needs to be developed to properly assess and manage them. In the past, scientists reviewed catch records as part of the assessment process. However, with all the rockfish closures, that tool is of limited value as landing opportunities are few. At this point, the fishing community has partnered with the NOAA scientists to develop another tool for assessing the rockfish stocks. Using multi-beam maps, acoustic surveys, and ROV habitat surveys, it was proposed that non-invasive methods of assessing stocks would be necessary for the future. Captains from the Sport Fishing Association of California brought generations worth of habitat records to the table in an effort to accelerate the ability for the science community to identify the impacted areas. It's a three-dimensional image that we created with the echo sounder data. Um, where we've interpolated between the track lines to get a, an image of the seafloor in blue overlaid with uh, three-dimensional images of the fish schools that uh, reside above the, the seafloor. Here we have some pelagic schools which we've identified as sardine uh, by the ROV and quite a large mixture of rockfish schools closer to the bottom. Extreme care is taken to have good communication between the boat crew and the ROV operator as a vehicle moves across the sea floor. The ROV is on a 300 foot tether to a 250 pound sinker referred to as a clump weight. The stern winch operator is in constant contact with the ROV operator to ensure the clump weight is 10 meters above the sea floor. This same tether is then attached to the clump weight cable and run all the way to the surface. So in theory this cable is actually almost 2,000 feet long. The ROV can then move freely along a 600 foot wide area as it cruises across the sea floor. If something of interest is located outside of this area, the boat operator will maneuver the vessel and follow the ROV. Telemetry on the bridge affords the captain the opportunity to see both the ROV position and the vessel position. Noteworthy in the ROV observations are large volumes of juvenile rockfish. Larger rockfish are schooling in their old haunts during the spawning season, which will accelerate the recovery process. As the ROV moves slowly across the seafloor, you will note the calm behavior of the rockfish. Curiosity is often the case as the fish react to the visitor to their undersea world. Several important aspects of the research are the need to map all of the habitat on the coast as well as the need to gather the acoustic signatures of the various fish species. While many independent groups have mapped certain areas of California bite, sharing the data is often for various reasons problematic. A goal on the horizon is to map the entire area 
and share that information with all interested parties. Identification of habitat is the most important aspect of studying rockfish as they have a pattern of aggregating around areas of structure. The end result of this research would be to provide a quantitative piece of the puzzle to understanding how and where rockfish live. As we move further along in this research, it will be imperative to keep the fishing community and the science community working together. As a team, they will be most effective in seeing proper management techniques develop through proper assessment of the fish stocks. The fauna and general habitat on the seafloor is quite sensitive and easily harmed by trawl nets. Fishermen throughout Southern California have already witnessed a marked improvement in the rockfish fishing the past few years. It is hoped that by working with the science community, fishermen will realize a more accurate assessment process as trust will be built when they participate in the data collection process.